Mark has described for us the huge popularity Jesus had at the peak of his public ministry, how crowds came to him from every place, but that the authorities, the scribes and the Pharisees, the Herodians, had turned against him, even as they had turned against John the Baptist, and John the Baptist was put in prison. And so with this opposition, Jesus anticipates that this will lead him to the cross. And so he begins to prepare for what will happen afterwards. As he builds the disciples up, they will establish the church. And so we now have a focus on the twelve as we continue reading Mark chapter 3 from verse 13. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted, and they came to him. Then he appointed twelve, that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out demons. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him, and they went into a house. Then the multitude came together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread, and when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who had come down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub. By the ruler of demons he casts out demons. So he called them to himself and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan is risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but has an end. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then he will plunder his house. Assuredly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons of men and whatever blasphemies they may utter. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation because they said he has an unclean spirit. Then his mothers and brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him, calling him, and a multitude was sitting around him. And they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother and my brothers? And he looked around in a circle at those who sat about him, and said, Here is my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we've shared together from Mark chapter 3 verses 13 to 35. This represents a transition, a turning point in the ministry as the nation becomes divided and as Jesus speaks about the fact that the nation that is divided cannot stand. So if the whole nation does not accept Jesus as their Messiah, then it becomes divided and it will not stand. And so he's making preparation for what will come next when the nation, when the house has fallen. So the first thing that Mark tells us is that Jesus went up on a mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. If you wanted to be a disciple of Jesus, you had to climb the mountain with him. And that would have been a general call to his disciples. But from that general call, he chose twelve. He appointed twelve, that they might continue with him, that he might send them out as his representatives, that they would preach, and that they would have power to heal sickness and to cast out demons. In other words, they would expand his ministry and do the things that he himself was doing. And we have the twelve identified. And it seems that there are three sets of brothers in the twelve. We know Simon, who he gave 
the name Peter, is listed first. And Andrew was his brother. But Andrew is listed fourth. The prime set of three includes Simon, James and John. James and John were brothers. They were partners in the fishing business with Simon, who he calls Peter, and Andrew. Then we also have Matthew, who was called Levi earlier, the son of Alphaeus. But now we have also James, the son of Alphaeus. So unless we're all mixed up and that James is Levi, normally we understand Matthew is Levi. So the second James is the brother of Matthew. So that's the third pair of brothers in the set of 12. Other than their names, there are two who have further information given about them. Simon the Canaanite, which seems to suggest that Simon was a descendant of the Canaanites who remained in the land when Joshua occupied the land. And that's interesting that that identification would have remained for 1500 years. The distinction that the Jews made between themselves and the other residents of the land. But Jesus includes one of these Canaanites among his disciples. And we have Judas Iscariot. As we'll see, he has his own agenda. He is the one who betrayed him. And after he had appointed them, he brought them into a house. So there is special personal fellowship that Jesus begins to have with these twelve. When they go out to teach, they must teach the things that he has taught them. He has taught them by rote. They have learned the things that he said when he was preaching. And they were the things that he would preach because they would be preaching in his name. They would be acting in his name. So Jesus now has the twelve. And the multitude still are interested in Jesus, coming to him in huge crowds so that they don't have opportunity even for eating a meal. And this prompts his own family to think this is out of control. He's out of his mind. And so we have Jesus' mother and his brothers and maybe other relatives coming to take him home, to try and interfere with his ministry. This is part of the division that is taking place over him. Even his own family do not recognise he is the Messiah. It is a clash of kingdoms. The message that had been proclaimed is that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. But Satan is not willing to give up his kingdom to Jesus. And so this is where the opposition is coming from. Satan had offered Jesus the kingdoms of the world if Jesus would worship Satan. But Jesus would not worship Satan. And so Satan resists Jesus. And one by one, Jesus is driving out Satan's demons from men. And Jesus points out that Satan is not going to be fighting against himself. He will be fighting against God. But the subtlety of Satan is shown in the fact that the scribes coming down from Jerusalem say he has Beelzebub. By the ruler of the demons, Jesus casts out demons. In other words, twisting the events completely upside down. If this is Satan's kingdom, he will be fighting against the establishment of the kingdom of God. The book of Daniel talks about the sequence of kingdoms that will be established. The Babylonian, the Persian, the Greek, the Roman, and ultimately the kingdom of God, with Jesus as their king. The Romans were in charge. They were represented in Israel by the Herodians, and the scribes and Pharisees had submitted to them, and so they were opposed to Jesus. But Jesus says, A house divided against itself cannot stand. If the nation is divided, it cannot stand. But Satan will not have risen up against himself. He cannot stand if he is divided. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then he will plunder his house. So Jesus must deal with Satan before he can take up the kingdom.